Hey, it's Steve. The purpose of this video is to tell you about our Amplify course, which is a deep dive into creative productivity. So this video should help you see if you're a match for the experience. Amplify is mainly for people who do some kind of creative work, either as their main profession or on the side. So that includes writing, speaking, composing music, podcasting, making videos, screenwriting, filmmaking, drawing, painting, any kind of arts or crafts, making furniture, doing live theater or putting on events, making websites, programming or developing apps, any kind of design work, inventing, really anything where you wanna produce value from your creativity. So the main question is, would you find it useful or beneficial if you could improve your creative flow and get more creative projects finished. If that's true for you, then I think you'd be a good match for the course. Many of my readers have told me that they don't have a shortage of ideas. Where they often struggle though is with consistency. Some of them find it difficult to attract a supportive audience. Some of them have a hard time with income generation and many of them find it challenging to fully enjoy the work they do with a sense of relaxed confidence, without so much tension and stress and self-doubt getting in their way. When I was a kid, my teachers would tell me that I was supposed to be very creative because I happened to be left-handed. And I believed them because I thought they knew something that I didn't. So from a young age, I developed a strong interest in doing creative projects on the side. What really got me going was when I started learning basic programming when I was 10 years old and I started to do little programming projects on the side. I remember writing a program to play tic-tac-toe, and later on, I got interested in writing video games professionally. So after college, I became an indie game developer, and I did that for 10 years through most of my 20s. In 2004, I started my personal development blog, and now I've written millions of words of published material, over 1,700 articles, and I keep writing more every year. I've also done podcasting, I've done YouTube videos, I've written a book that was published by Hay House. I've done lots of live three-day workshops, mostly on the Las Vegas Strip. I've been doing lots of coaching. I founded Conscious Growth Club. And lately, I've been really into developing major deep dive courses like this one. So my professional life has involved many different creative projects in different fields. Some of them only taking a few hours and other t others taking months or even years to complete. I could never really see myself as a corporate employee, so I've never been one. I always thought it would be more interesting to make a living from my creative work. So I've been pursuing that ever since college. Now, in the beginning, it was a struggle. It took me, I'd say about six years before I was able to consistently support myself this way. I made a lot of mistakes. I didn't choose the right business models. I sank into debt. I went bankrupt, but I just kept going and didn't give up. And eventually I figured out how to make it work and it's been working well ever, ever since. What took me so long was that a lot of the things I had to figure out were pretty counterintuitive. I started out reading a lot of books on creativity and productivity, but I didn't really find the right solutions in them. And looking back, I think that it actually slowed me down a bit because those books filled my mind with a lot of ideas that sounded good, but I didn't find myself actually doing what they said very well. Maybe you've had similar experiences. I still love to read productivity books, but I think it's more for the entertainment value these days. I usually get better results not doing what they advise. What I do gain from them though, is that general vibe of wanting to be more productive, of wanting to contribute more, which does help as long as I don't overpressure myself with it. One of the biggest insights I wanna share is that it's super important to build a really strong relationship with your creative flow. Now that relationship can be delicate. It's easy to mess it up and it's hard to get it right, at least at first. People often try to approach this like they need a system of habits that they have to lock in with more self-control and more discipline. And that doesn't usually work very well. I see this relationship as more like a dance that's always evolving. And if you try to lock it in place and over control it, your creative flow will often fight you to avoid being caged, but you can learn to dance with it very productively in fact. So if you're getting stuck a lot, then I'd suggest that you may wanna come at this from a different angle. The main problem is that people keep thinking that their solution is to push harder 
and to pressure themselves more and to be more disciplined. And that doesn't really work, at least not very sustainably. I think it's more likely to burn people out and leave them feeling drained and tired. So we're really not taking this deep dive in the direction of lots more control and discipline. This has more to do with taking a deeper look at what makes you creatively productive and really seeing and accepting the truth of that. And then you have to get your life aligned with that truth. And this includes repairing any damage you've done to that relationship with your creative flow. It's almost like it's a person that has its own will and it won't always cooperate with you if you don't treat it well. So I'm not gonna recommend a high pressure approach here. The solutions that we'll be exploring in the course are actually a lot gentler than what you may have encountered before. So I, I see that there's a real opportunity to share a unique and different approach to improving your creative flow. There's a lot to this though. So this is not going to be a small course. We're going to go really deep here. We're gonna cover lots of different angles on this to give you many different aha moments along the way. Ultimately, this course is meant to be very results oriented. We're going to focus on what actually works in the real world. I'm a real, uh, I'm a real creative professional guiding you through this experience. I'm not an academic. Personally, I think one of my main strengths is figuring out what works through a lot of exploration and testing, and then coming up with good frames and models to explain why it works so I can really wrap my head around it. I always wanna understand why things work. It's never enough for me to just accept that they do. And then I love to teach and share these models and these practices with other people. Doing that sort of thing has basically been the main thrust of my life and my creative work since 2004. So I think you may be pleasantly surprised to see that you can get some really nice creative flow going and a lot more creative output, a lot more finished projects without all the pressure and stress that you might've succumbed to in the past. All right, let's talk about the specific transformations that we're going to cover in this course. A while back, I asked my readers what sorts of changes they wanted to work on together with respect to being creatively productive. And it basically boiled down to five changes that they wanted to see. So I'll share these next. See if any of these resonate with you since that would suggest that you're probably a good match for the course. The first change is to overcome creative anxiety. People reported feeling pressured, nagged, stressed, frustrated, guilty, disappointed, blocked, overwhelmed, and so on. One person said, I found most projects immediately or eventually infused with anxious feelings. Some people have doubts about the value they're providing, also known as imposter syndrome. One person said, I often look at my creative work and worry that it's complete rubbish. Creative anxiety can really put a damper on your creative flow. It can cost people a lot of lost time. One person said, the struggle of me being afraid to start is costing me the progress I could have been making all these years. And another person said, these struggles are costing me my youth. So there's a lot at stake here. What people want is to enjoy their creative work with a lighthearted, free-flowing playfulness of spirit. They want to feel relaxed and confident. They want to have more fun creating. So we're going to work on healing any heaviness in your relationship with your creative work to make that relationship lighter, more relaxed, and more fun. As one reader described it, less relying on accountability and more genuine excitement, satisfaction, and confidence. And another reader said, I want it to feel like play. That's beautiful, I want it to feel like play, why not? You need the right amount of pressure to be creatively productive. Too much, you get stressed out. Too little, maybe you get bored. So in Amplify, we'll help you create better emotional alignment so you can flow into your creative work with more ease and lightness. The second change is that people wanna be more consistent with their creative output. They want to finish and release more projects. This is a really big deal for a lot of people. Some people are good at starting projects, but they keep succumbing to shiny object syndrome. Have you heard that term before? So they get partway through a project and then they set it aside and start chasing after some new idea. Since they're not finishing their projects, there's no real value delivery. And that could be pretty bad for income generation too. One person said, started half finished projects litter the house. Another person said, I get pulled away and the pause becomes power off. It costs you a lot if you don't follow through and finish, more than just time and money. 
One reader summed it up in a way that uh, honestly made me a bit teary-eyed when I read it the first time. Here's what he said. The sad part is that with becoming older and having kids, I quit my side project ideas earlier and earlier. Wow. Um, to me, that's a powerful description of what it's like to experience the slow death of your creative flow, quitting earlier and earlier each time. It reminds me of the saying, don't die with your music still in you. What people want is a stable and reliable creative flow that they can trust will always be there for them. Something that consistently converges on finishing. They're tired of missing so many opportunities. Some people also want more time and energy for their creative work. One person said their challenge was preserving the mental and physical energy to put towards creative projects when I have to devote so much time to a job. And some people have a goal of becoming prolific creators so they can be constant fountains of creative expression. One person described it as having a smooth content production mindset and system that makes product creation pleasurable, productive, and profitable. So this is another powerful transformation that we'll work on together, helping you get into the flow of consistent creative output. Let's talk about big transformation number three. Many people struggle with a lack of connection to an appreciative audience for their work. They either don't have an audience yet, or maybe they have a misaligned audience that doesn't seem to care that much about what they're doing. So they're left wondering if their art even matters to anyone. Like, why bother? Doing creative work is very different when you have an audience that appreciates and supports your art. It's a lot more empowering than creating something in a void all by yourself and then hoping to surprise some random audience with your work someday eventually. As one person shared, I feel I cannot do it by myself in silence and be successful. Your art can also improve your social life by attracting people who really connect with you on a personal level. If you're going to bare your soul through your art, you may discover that someone recognizes you as a kindred spirit. I've made a lot of good friends, and I met my wife Rochelle because of the creative work I do. So if your social life feels a bit stunted, imagine that a whole new social world could open up for you if you learn how to connect with an aligned audience for your creative work. Since a lot of people need help with this, a big part of the course will involve helping you attract and connect with an audience that appreciates, respects, loves, encourages, and financially supports you. Life takes on a whole different flavor when this becomes your daily reality. How about our fourth transformation? Some people want to have more impact. They want to make bigger and bolder contributions. One person said they want to create boatloads of value. For some people, this means bigger creative projects. Other people describe it as having more creative courage. One person said their goal was having the courage to pick a project that you feel is a little scary, but you know you will figure it out, and that really inspires you. Some people want to shift from short-form content, like articles, short videos, songs, social media updates, to bigger projects like books, albums, screenplays, films, courses, or team projects. Other people want to build larger audiences so they can reach more people. So the challenge here is, how do you scale up to bigger impact without burning out? A related challenge that some people have when they're just starting out is that they feel that their skills aren't strong enough to provide much value. But you can actually provide some good value for people as you build your skills, and so we'll cover that too. It's very rewarding to complete a big creative project and to see what a difference it makes in people's lives, even year after year. I still get appreciative feedback about creative projects I did more than 20 years ago. It's a wonderful feeling when you've added something to the collective work of humanity. It's like you're fully participating in the flow of life. It really changes your relationship with your art. All right, our fifth and final major transformation is generating a sustainable income from your creative output. Some people just want to do some creative projects on the side, and they think it would be nice if some of those projects were income generating. One person said they wanted to create consistent recurring income through creative projects. Other people want the full lifestyle of being an independent creator, so the income from their creative work pays for everything. One person said, I want to make art a foundation 
of my life. Another person said they wanted to remove the need to have a boss. Several people actually said that they'd love to do something similar to what I do, either with blogging or with podcasting, writing books, making music, making videos, or something else. If you want this to be your life, it takes an investment. There's a lot to figure out, especially when you're first starting. I like it. I'm glad I went this way. And one person said it like this. I'd love my life to feel like one wild, grand adventure. That could be your reality too, but it requires making different choices, right? So as part of the course, I want to help you figure out how to make good income from your creative work, whether it's extra money on the side or if you want to cover all of your expenses. So basically, what people want from this experience is enjoyment, consistency, appreciation, contribution, and abundant support for their creative flow, including financial support. These are the big ones, but there are many other aspects of creative productivity that we'll also cover along the way. So what do you think? If these changes sound pretty appealing to you, if, or if you're thinking that this would be awesome, because it will be, <laughs> then I'd say that you'll probably gain a lot from this and you should probably join us. Are these transformations possible? Yes, they're not easy though. For many creative people who are happy with their creative output and their results, it took many years to get there. I really had to unlearn much of what I thought I knew about creativity and productivity that I learned from other sources. I like to pay close attention to what actually works rather than what sounds like it should work. Sometimes what gets results isn't what you'd expect. So I want this deep dive to be very practical. Our real focus here is on helping you get better results with your creative flow. That's the main purpose of this deep dive, to help you get better results. It won't be a short journey to guide you through all these changes. It's going to take many weeks, but we could potentially sh shave years, maybe even decades off your learning curve here. So this is the kind of course I wish I could have taken when I was just starting on this path because it would have saved me so much time and trouble. In fact, I would love to pull a Bill and Ted here and just send this course back in time to my past self. Paradoxes be damned. Let's talk about the format of the course. The main format of this deep dive is an audio course. People keep telling me that for our courses, they really like the flexibility of audio. Some people like to just kick back and listen. Other people like to listen while they're driving, cooking, eating, exercising, cleaning, etc. Some people like to do our courses as a daily walking meditation. The lessons are about 10 to 20 minutes each, say about 15 minutes on average. So you can go through the whole course in fairly small bites. I recommend listening to just one lesson a day, but you can do them at whatever pacing works for you. All of the lessons can be streamed from our web portal so you can play the lessons in your browser. It's all mobile friendly. Or you can download the lessons and put them on your favorite devices and take them with you anywhere. In the lessons, I'll guide you through the core transformations that I talked about earlier. And we're going to cover a lot. Mindset shifts, reframes, tools, practices, and more. Really, whatever it takes to help you move forward with each transformation that's important to you. There are short exercises that go with each lesson, kind of like journaling exercises, and there's a workbook to guide you through them. The workbook also includes a one-page summary of each lesson, so you can review the main ideas of any lesson at a glance. We're also including full written transcripts of every audio lesson. So that's nice if you want to skim through the text version of a lesson to review it. Some people told me they actually prefer to read the lessons instead of listening to them, so you have that option if you want. Now, many people said, they wanted there to be a social aspect to this course too, so they could hear about other people's experiences. I could see the value in, in that for some people. So I'm also going to host some live group video calls using Zoom for the first several weeks after we launch the course. We'll do eight calls total, one per week. These calls will be for extra group sharing, group discussions, and some Q&A with me. Now, attending these group calls is optional because the core content will be in the audios. So these video calls are for people who think it would be worthwhile to do this partly as a social journey. Other people may prefer to do this entirely as a personal inner journey. It's your choice. It's just one price. There's no extra cost for the video calls. If you can attend these group calls live, you have that option. But if you can't attend live, 
or if you're joining the course after these live calls have already occurred, then you'll get the recordings. We'll record these calls and we'll add the recordings to the course portal so everyone gets them. And I'll refer you to the invitation webpage for the course for the details about the calls. I'm also including a bunch of extra bonuses to give you some other angles on creative productivity and to help you apply the ideas to your own projects. I'm not going to go over these bonuses here because there are a lot of them, but you'll find them all listed on the invitation webpage for the course, so please check that out too. I think that with all we're putting into this, a lot of creative people are going to make some really nice gains from this course. It's going to be really fascinating to go through this together, like a giant explosion of creativity. For each new deep dive we do, I like to think about the vibe or the emotional energy that we bring to it. This isn't just a mental journey. It's an emotional journey too. This course isn't really about pushing you per se. It's not really about self-discipline. This is about finally getting to the truth of what you actually need to be creatively productive in a way that you enjoy. So I'd like you to approach this course with a very open mind. Try to set aside what you think you already know about creativity and productivity and bring a fresh desire to explore this from a new perspective. As I mentioned before, we're especially going to explore your relationship with your creative flow. That's a very different approach than traditional productivity advice. Getting that relationship to be really strong is like 80% of the success that we're going for here. If you're consistently motivated to create because you really like the experience of it, you don't have to get the other 20% perfect. You'll find a way to create. So we're going for a big upgrade in that core relationship here. And for many people, that relationship needs a lot of work. It could use a lot of improvement. Do your best to set aside any lingering heaviness in your heart, like from past disappointments related to your creative projects. See if you can bring a fresh spirit of hope to this experience. This should be a very fresh exploration for you, different than anything you've tried before. So I think there's genuine cause to be hopeful. As for the vibe that I wanna to bring to this experience, I'd say that it includes caring and encouragement and playfulness and fun. That's probably no surprise if you've gone through some of our other courses but there's something a little different about the vibe I sense around this course. I might describe it as a feeling of reverence. Inviting you into this creative journey feels sort of spiritual in a way. Think about it, we're doing something here that could really change people's lives, not just your life and my life and the lives of all the people going through the course, but think about the lives of all the people who will be affected by our collective creative work in the years ahead. All the ripples that we'll be creating. That's a weighty responsibility and it's a powerful opportunity we have. We're going to create shifts in the world based on what we do. And I feel like on some level, somehow some part of the world senses that potential. And I think it's going to support us in a bigger way than we may anticipate. Because of this course, new books will be written, new songs will be recorded, new websites will be launched, new apps will be developed and released. And you can be part of those ripples that we're creating together. I think that's a really cool opportunity. It's an invitation to have an experience that's bigger than just our individual goals. What we have in common is that we're all people who have accepted life's invitation to create and to share something with the world. And that is a life-changing invitation. It's a powerful invitation to say yes to, isn't it? Being a creator is challenging. It's not an easy path. But once you've tasted its potential, it's really hard to turn your back on it. That drive to create is always going to tempt you for the rest of your life. There's always going to be a part of you wanting to feel at home in that creator space. I think that's a big part of what we're going for here, to help you feel centered and at home in your creative flow, which means that relationship has to be really strong, almost like being in love. So there will be a lot of different vibes and feelings that we'll bring to this experience, but I think it's this reverence for our shared journey, the challenges that we all have to face, and the importance of this relationship with our creative flow that really unites us in this journey. There's just something special about the possibilities that we can explore together with our group creative energy. How long have people been creating art? Well, the oldest known cave painting was found in a cave in Spain more than 64,000 years ago. And get this. It was made by a Neanderthal. Neanderthals went extinct about 40,000 years ago. So this piece of art 
not only outlive the artist, it outlived the artist's species. Can you imagine creating something that will still be around 64,000 years from now? Isn't that possible though? If you write a book or create a song or make a film, that kind of preservation seems very doable with today's technology. You know, when I wrote my book, Personal Development for Smart People, I actually decided to write something that could still be relevant to people 100 years after it was published. And that mindset helped me write a better book because I had to think about universal principles that could stand the test of time. I felt like I was writing for future generations too. Now, can you imagine being that Neanderthal and having someone say to you, come on, what are you doing? You're just making a mess of the cave. You're getting paint all over your hands. Why don't you go get a real job? But who gets the last laugh? Who gets the immortal respect? It's the artist. When you create art and you share it in some way, you elevate yourself. You become something more than just an individual. You become part of the stream of life in a very special way. That invitation is always there. It's always beckoning you to participate and to be part of something greater. Several days before I made this recording, my name actually landed on Mars. It's physically etched on a plate that landed with the Mars rover Perseverance, along with millions of other people who submitted their names for this thing as well. I think it's kind of cool that NASA did this. There's a record of my existence on another planet now. The physical surface of Mars is slightly different because I exist. And just knowing that gives me this extra feeling of expansiveness and connectedness. There's something about doing creative work that gives me a similar kind of feeling. The invitation here is for you to invest in your creative self. I've invested quite a lot in my creativity over the years and it has paid off really well. That long-term investment is one reason I feel like I have excess capacity at this time in my life. I have the time and the energy and the motivation to invite people to do these interesting deep dives together and I really enjoy them. Does it make sense for you to be part of this? I'd love for you to join if you feel some enthusiasm for this experience, if it seems like this is a good opportunity for you. Whether you do this deep dive or not, please don't give up on your creative self. Keep nurturing this part of you. I think it's always going to crave an outlet for expressing itself, so don't turn your back on it. Don't let that part of you die a slow death year after year. Don't die with your music still in you. You know, one of the biggest benefits that I get from being in tune with my creative flow and knowing that I can get into that flow when I want is that I feel like life always has my back. I always feel like I'm supported by someone or something. There's always an inspiring step forward that presents itself. There's always another note to play. I feel fueled by a lot of energy that flows towards me and through me and that's very different than feeling like I had to self-power everything, which was how I often felt when I was in my 20s. At the time of this recording, I'm about six weeks from turning 50, and I've done a lot of creative work all through my 20s and 30s and 40s, and it has enriched my life. And I certainly look forward to continuing this exploration in my 50s and beyond. That seems like something great to look forward to. I don't have major regrets about what I didn't do. And I think it's because I really invested in exploring my creative journey, wherever it took me, even when that required taking some risks and doing some pivots and going against what other people were telling me I should do. So I don't have any serious doubts about the path I'm on. It just feels like I invested my time and energy in the right ways, such that my feeling of centeredness increased as I went along. So I feel more at home today with where I am now than I did when I first started on this path. My 20s were the most difficult because I had a lot to learn. And I'm grateful though that my past self decided that he was just going to figure this out, whatever it took, and he didn't give up. This path definitely has some challenges, but I really like living in tune with my creative flow and sort of dancing with it in a different way year after year. It's just a very fulfilling and rewarding way to live. Getting the right balance can be a delicate process though. I want you to know that just by making the effort to create and share something with the world, you have my respect. I know how hard it can be. I know some of what you have to deal with. There are many rewards on this journey, but there's pain as well. I think the occasional pain can make you a better, better artist though. 
You're trying to do something that you find meaningful and purposeful. And that's a powerful choice to make. Other people may not, uh, may not respect that. They may beat you up for not getting fast enough results. They may look down upon you. But I want you to know that I admire you just for stepping forward and accepting life's invitation to create. Let's talk about the price. What does Amplify cost? The price for the entire deep dive is 497 US dollars. That's for everything all included. This is a hefty course and it's meant to be an investment. But I also wanna keep the price low enough to make it accessible for people who really wanna do this. I'm certainly invested in this and I want you to feel invested too. It's important that you do the lessons, do the workbook exercises, and make some real changes. This deep dive is for people who want results. Let me tell you about the honor code. The honor code applies to all of our courses, including Amplify. Our courses are really not meant for dabblers. They're for people who wanna make some real changes in their lives and get real results. And that takes a commitment. There is no money back guarantee for this course. I want you to make a real decision here. Are you in or out? Do you want this experience? Now, I understand that from your perspective, it may seem like more of a risk to join without a money back guarantee. I think that's good though. I think that sh this should be your risk to take. To enroll in Amplify without a money back guarantee, you need to trust me and you need to trust yourself to follow through. And that's a good standard for everyone doing this. I think your results depend on it. We would probably get more signups if we offered a money back guarantee but we'd surely attract more dabblers who aren't as committed and that can drag down the group energy. So we're not gonna do that. And fortunately, the signups for our courses have always been abundant. So I don't feel any pressing need to try to scoop up more signups from people who really aren't as committed. So the honor code is that you do your part and I do my part and we both commit ourselves to this experience and we invest in this together. I've made my choice and now you get to make your choice. Now, if someone has a problem with his honor code, they wouldn't be a good fit for our courses. For those people, there's plenty of material that they can continue to enjoy elsewhere on my website for free. And they're still welcome to join us in a course when they're ready for that kind of experience. Again, the courses are really meant for people who want to immerse themselves in getting results. So it's not just a decision to sign up for a course. You have to decide if you're really ready to make some real changes in your life. That's a big decision, and I don't want to reduce the weightiness of that decision for you. It really is an important decision for you to make. What happens after you join? If Amplify sounds good to you and you want to do it with us, you can sign up right now and start going through the lessons right away. The first lesson is only 14 minutes, so it's an easy start. Click the button to join, go through the payment process, and then you'll see a welcome page with instructions on how to get started. And then from there, you can follow the links to the main Amplify portal, which has all the lessons and the bonus gifts. You'll also be emailed a copy of those instructions along with your login info. So it's pretty straightforward. If you have feedback to share as you go through the course, or if you ever need tech support or help with anything, there's a support form in the portal that you can use, or you can use the contact form on my public website, or you can just reply to any email from me. It's my hope that you'll really love this course and that it will help you change your life in many positive ways. And you'll wanna do more courses afterwards or even come to a live workshop and connect in person. I would prefer that this is not just a one-shot deal. I would prefer that we can have a long-term relationship of investing in each other's growth. Many people who've gone through our previous courses, they don't even watch the invitation videos anymore. They know from experience that it's gonna be worthwhile. And when I tell them a new course is available, some of them just join right away. I take that as a good sign. It means people are getting results and they want more. And I want you to get results. That's good for both of us. So do you see yourself doing this? Let me give you a little tip to help you decide. When I have to make a decision like this, I like to ask myself, does this path have a heart? Does this path have a heart? If I'm wondering if I should say yes, and I can answer yes to that question, like I feel that this could really change the course of my life, that's usually a sign that I should say yes and do it. When my real question is, am I ready to take this on? Like, I can tell it's gonna be good, and my main concern is whether I'm actually ready to do it now at this time in my life with everything else I have going on. 
when I feel like my heart wants me to do it, like the invitation feels very personal in a way. Those decisions usually work out really well. Those kinds of experiences have added a lot of value to my life. It's a feeling like, you know, I think I'm supposed to be part of this. It feels like reality is inviting me to do it. It's like the invitation isn't just from a person. Reality is tapping me on the shoulder and saying, this is for you, by the way. It's your choice, but it's for you. Well, if you're ready, then I'll see you inside and let's get you into the best creative flow of your life. All right, let's do this.